Hi everyone, I'm Ashmita Chitlangya. And I am Pushpam from the Lancaster University. And you are listening to the MBA Lancaster Highlights Podcast. In this series, we are going to talk to students about their experiences on the Lancaster MBA course. Keep listening and stay, stay tuned. tuned. Hello everyone, welcome to the last episode of MBA Lancaster Highlights Podcast. And today we have with us Robin Remke, who is our program director. And we're so happy to have you because this is our last episode and we really want you to, you know, uh, tell the audience about your experience with us. All right, let's start. What are the three pillars on which the Lancaster MBA is based on? Oh, that's a great question. Um, we very much are committed to building a curriculum around responsibility, sustainability, and inclusivity. And we came up with these three concepts in a number of ways. First, we asked our program partners, what, what do you need future leaders to have in, in terms of framework and mindset? And they talked very much about sustainability. Everybody's talking about sustainability. But we wanted to develop a framework that encompassed sustainability beyond just climate change. We wanted to think about more than the environment, but sustainable communities, sustainable organizations. We also want to talk about responsible leadership. How do we develop leaders who can make big, bold, difficult decisions um, in a very sort of uncertain world. Um, and our program partner said we need to learn to be inclusive. We've talked about diversity for a very long time, but we really don't understand how to be inclusive and what inclusive means in an organizational context. Yeah. I hope that as you completed your modules and you intera interacted with our guest speakers and the trips that you took, I hope that you were able to see sort of remnants of these, these principles throughout um, so that they aren't just things that we add to a module or add to the curriculum, kind of have a day on inclusivity or a day of responsibility, right. but actually see elements of it throughout because that's really what it, you need in order to lead well uh, in a very sort of difficult, challenging time. Absolutely, absolutely. Ashmita. Yeah, I think just adding on to that, so you know, I definitely think that we've also sort of picked up those three principles and we kind of use it all the time. Uh, but we definitely want to know like, why do you think uh, every leader needs to have these three principles, you know, in the future? Like what, what is the main crux of having these principles? So you have to have them simply to, to be successful. I think, um, Whatever kind of organization you're, you're leading, whether it's a large multi -cor multinational corporate organization, whether it's a small SME, whether it's a startup, uh, w whether you're working in government, whether you're working in philanthropic organizations, every organization is facing enormous challenges right now, huge challenges, and there's no simple right answer. And I think what we've discovered is that you have to think responsibly and when you think responsibly you're thinking about your stakeholders you're thinking about your shareholders if that's appropriate but you're thinking about larger communities in which you exist right. and operate um, if you're thinking sustainably you're thinking more than just short term you know one of the things that we know uh, CEOs often suffer with is sort of short term orientation I get in I need to do something big I need to make a splash yeah. Well, what is that splash going to do as it ripples beyond right. your sort of three, six, nine months? We need to help leaders develop a longer term, sustainable orientation towards leading. And to do that, you have to be inclusive. We can no longer afford to ignore important, interesting, valuable voices. Through all these 11 months, apart from the modules, there are a number of activities that mm -hmm. are planned. You know, it is interspersed with, you know, we start off with the Lake District, then we go off to Prague, then there's a London trip, mm -hmm. then there's Bletchley Park, and you know, also culture. So what do you think that's the idea behind that? You know, wh wh why is it designed like this? Because as a leader, you need to learn how to learn and to think critically and reflexively about all that you do. So we know that when you go to work, right, when you go into your office or you go to your home office now, for as many of us are doing, um, you, you bring a certain level, a certain set of skills, um, whether you're, if you're a data analyst or if you're an HR director, you have those theories and ideas that help guide you and tell you how to do your job. But actually, to be a leader, you need to incorporate all of the, uh, these other elements around communication, listening, um, and and and. That really is essential, and it's not something you just learn in a twelve in a you know exactly. two hour session, exactly. right? So when it comes to doing things like traveling to Prague, um, uh, just listening to you all, I could <laughs> tell that you know you learned a lot from the guest speakers. You learned a lot by going to the various organizations, trying the beer and yes. things like this. Yeah. 
But I think you learned a lot from walking the streets of Prague, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Hearing the different languages, feeling the different climate, the, just you get that sense of it. And you can appreciate what it feels like to be othered in that kind of context, and that's very valuable. Part of learning, I think, is sort of stretching yourself a bit okay. and, and understanding that trying something new can sometimes be a bit scary, yeah. uh, and heaven forbid, failing. Uh, you know, nobody likes to fail, but actually, we all fail, yeah. and yeah. we fail a lot. Yeah often and, and, and we need to get comfortable with that because if you don't fail then you often don't try new things and, and so it's 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 all of those kinds of things and, and so you have to get out of the classroom. Yeah. You know, you have to get out of the classroom to, to really sort of get that comprehensive experience. Absolutely. You know just before this we were talking about Bletchley Park mm. and the dinner and the hotel we stayed in, yeah. you know, overlooking the football. I mean these are the kind of memories that will stick to us for entire life like whenever we meet our cohort yeah. you know going forward 10 years time, i think these are the things that we are talking yeah. going to talk about you know yeah. bletchley park and the the time we spent in prague you know we tried electric scooter mm. over there yes. walking on the bridge <laughs> you know people just going out and partying yeah. absolutely yeah. It's fun well, and what i laugh about too so we you know we go to bletchley park we go to the national museum of computing and what do you guys talk about it's the football field <laughs> in the hotel right <laughs> but that but that just shows you the complete Complexity and the wonderfulness yeah. of our life. It's it's not always about the the formal elements. It's not about the curriculum. It's yeah. not about the the text that we read. It's those conversations you have Absolutely. in the hallway. Right. Um, I think you know this has been a tough year. Nobody disputes that we we got through COVID and uh, war and you know a whole a whole bunch of other just challenges. That's true. And what impressed me and what I will forever take from this is the way you all rallied around that, you know, passing food to each other through windows to, to <laughs> make sure that, you know, people who were isolating weren't yes. hungry. Yeah. Things like that, that you, you, and we don't teach that. We never told you to do that. Yeah. In fact, I think we said stay away, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, um, but you did that because of, you know, that compassion you had for yeah. each other uh, and compassion for people, mind you, that you didn't know even yeah. two or three months before. Yeah. Right, so I think that's that's the power um, of the program that exists. It develops in the classroom and then sort of trickles out beyond it. Yeah, I think another part which you just mentioned about the competition, right, and the fact that it makes you feel uncomfortable. So I think at least for me, I think the journey was uncomfortable, and that's what it's supposed to be. The minute you feel comfortable, <laughs> yeah. what's the point of Absolutely. being here, right? So um, you've obviously seen us on day mm -hmm. one, and you're seeing us now. Mm -hmm. So we want to know from you, what do you think has changed? Like, how do you think <laughs> we've evolved? Because I'm sure we have, but it would be nice to hear yeah, from you. Yeah, no. well, and don't forget, I met most of you, all of you, in fact, in your interviews. Yes, yes. exactly. And so um, uh, literally just last week, after I met you all up at the lake yes. for, for your walk, I went and cleaned out my office because we're moving offices. <laughs> okay. And I found my notes from my interviews oh, wow. with you okay. from quite a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I pulled out your CVs okay. that you submitted. <laughs> No, why are you laughing? Because they were amazing because, CVs. Because honestly, those CVs shouldn't be called CVs, yeah. I guess. Yeah, we yeah they, were, they were a little bit different than the ones that I've looked at lately, right? Yeah. Right. And, and that's, I have to, I just chuckle, I laugh, and I just, I, I almost sort of tear up a bit because I see how far you have come. Now, don't get me wrong, you would not have been admitted into this program if you were not damn impressive. Right. You know, each and every one of you come to this program smart, talented, with a huge amount of experience. Uh, and I'm in, awe with, uh, I'm in awe of each and every one of you the day you step into the classroom. But then I see you sort of build your confidence and I see you sort of refine your, your thoughts and you sort of become a little bit more nuanced in the way you think about problems over the course of the, yeah. of, and, and I see you sort of developing um, a sense of sort of identity that even exceeds where you were when you first right. began the program. And that is so wonderful to watch. So what according to you is the highlight of this one year now that you've mm. seen us? Well, I have to say, so one of the things that I just found so remarkable, Diwali night was just impressive because, you know, I remember thinking um, you, you so kindly, asked, well, first of all, you asked for the day off. I said, no, <laughs> um, no, you got to go to work. Um, but then, you know, um, uh, you invited me to your stuff. And I have to admit, I thought, oh, I'll pop in for a few minutes and you might have, you know, little, some little food. I wasn't even sure anybody would show up. And, and it was this massive celebration with friends and family and, and beautiful dress Dresses. and food and just, ah. Oh. 
And I just, and, it, and then the talent. And what I what really sort of stood out for me at that moment was the um, camaraderie that was in the room. So people who, for whom Diwali was a very special and intimate part of their, their practice and their faith and their belief, and others who had never even heard of it yeah. Yeah. until that day. Right. And everybody felt welcomed, you know, and everybody felt part of the group, yeah. friends and family and strangers all together. And when people were, were singing and reciting poetry and dancing, you all acted as if this was the best thing in the world. You were so <laughs> giving yeah. in your um, admiration for those performances. And I just thought, this is a good group. And I, I just could tell from the start. And what was nice is that every single guest who's ever spoken to you, worked with you, you know, met with you, given you a tour of something, has always come back to me and said, oh, what a great group. And I can say, yeah, I know. <laughs> I got to pick them. <laughs> um, knowing full well that it has nothing to do with me. But it's you all. It was, you all are an amazing, great group. On that note, yes. I think we would like to thank you. Yeah. Thank you once again. For this again. Lancaster MBA experience, I would yeah. say. Yeah. You know, of 11 months. And the folks joining next year, please come uh, in immerse yourself. Do participate in activities. Organize activities, yes. you know go around with people it's not just about modules like you know robin said it's about all the experiences it's a wonderful place make the most of it thank you, you very will much. not be signing the same off. person for sure so yes. get ready for that <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much signing off